Nash, uh, you also just wrote this article you, you sent to me about debunking the lie that Trump is a fascist. Now, we've done a lot of work on this as well. We've, we, we've presupposed that Bernie is more of a fascist than Trump. But explain to the audience your, uh, your, your stance there. Well, we could start by talking about, uh, you know, fascist economics. Now, uh, if you look up the definition of fascism, you'll see under the economic category, state run capitalism. That's what fascism means. Mm -hmm. uh, Trump is trying to reduce the power of the government, to increase the power of the private sector. Fascism moves in the opposite direction. If you look at the policy of the Democratic Party, uh, even Obama over the past eight years, we haven't really seen, strictly speaking, socialism, because in, in socialist countries, the government tries to nationalize private industry. Right. But under Obama, what we see is private industry remains private. We still have private uh, hospitals. We have private health insurance companies, but the government tells them what to do. Right. And similarly, under Obama, we saw increasing federal regulation of banks, uh, investment houses, energy companies. Bernie and Hillary wanted to expand a federal control of higher education. So this is quite strictly speaking state-run capitalism. Another word for it is fascism. Yeah, and a lot of people, a new term people have used is, is crony capitalism or corporatism. So basically what you're doing is bringing it back to the actual definition. People won't find this on Google, by the way. What's funny is it's fascism. It refers to it as right wing. And if you Google communism, yeah. no, mention no mention of it being left. So I think people have really turned around the it's spectrum. It's almost as if they're lying. It's almost <laughs> as if they're being misleading, Dinesh. <laughs> well, uh, here's the thing that uh, all of this, uh, there's a sort of a history of this. And um, in the 20s and 30s, uh, fascism was understood to be on the left, both by the fascists themselves and by their critics. Right. Um, Mussolini was a Marxist. He was the leader of Italian socialism. Uh, he and Gramsci were the two biggest names in Italian socialism. When Mussolini came to power, Lenin sent a telegram of congratulations, basically acknowledging a fellow revolutionary on the left. Yes. Uh, Hitler, we all know, was a national socialist, changed the name of the German Workers' Party to stick in national socialism. So. What happened is that after World War II, when fascism and Nazism became uh, ineradicably stained with the odor of Holocaust, that's when the progressives who were coming to power in the university said, oh, gee, this is very bad for us. Uh, if fascism is seen on the left, young people are going to sort of have the goods on us and they're going to look elsewhere. So we need to do a little bit of a cover up operation here. And let's see if we can move fascism from the left wing column into the right wing column. So we're seeing the legacy of this preposterous sleight of hand. Uh, and that's that's part of what I love to do in the book. It's not just about Trump. I'm blowing the cover on sort of a, um, a hundred years of secret history, which helps us really understand what these things like fascism, Nazism, what do they actually mean? Yeah, and that's a really good point because w when we started doing this uh, with Bernie videos, down vote, down vote, down vote, we've talked about this and it'll lead into the next topic. And then more recently, when we've talked about Bernie and compared his policies directly with communists, directly with, with known socialists uh, or, or fascists. It's, the similarities are striking. We've even gone co quote for quote, and people are much more open-minded now because I think they're waking up. And that's something I wanted to bring up now.